This is not a game. This is a 12-week job interview. It's a dog-eat-dog situation. 14 people have come to London in search of a job. There is no phone in here. There is no text a number. There is no panel of judges. I'm the one that decides who gets fired, and I'm going to be the one, ultimately, who decides who gets hired. They've come to battle it out for a job with Sir Alan Sugar. I am the most belligerent person that you could ever come across. Tough and straight talking, Sir Alan's built a business empire worth 800 million pounds. Business is not about coming, piss my money out the wall. He's offering one job with a six-figure salary. Let's go, 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 go. To get it, they're going to have to live and work together. Don't fucking dick me around. I'm getting pissed off with it. Quite frankly, I'd like to get rid of the bleeding three of you. This is the ultimate job interview. You're fired. You are fired. You are lightweight. You're fired. Previously on The Apprentice. Today's task is all about letting flats. Once again, Dun and Michelle project managed, but team spirit soon evaporated. It's all about the team for me, don't get me wrong, but I don't want to be getting too... Paul thought Michelle was blocking him. She's blatantly just gone out there trying to get some sales and tried to be the top performer. What's the problem? That there's people here that haven't been called yet. Let's have an attitude about it, and we can call them in the morning. All right, Michelle. In Dunn's team, Ruth was the only one making deals. Two, four, five. Yeah, right. Okay. Saeed lost keys. Nicholas. Nicholas. His client. I thought that might be Nicholas. And then more keys. Bizarre. Project manager Dunn tried to stay positive. Tomorrow's a new day. Hopefully, it'll be okay. But it wasn't. Yay, you're a superstar. Michelle's team outsold their rivals. Stop pointing your finger at me. Keep this professional. The bottom line here is, mate, you couldn't close a barn door even if you tripped over it. In the boardroom, a fight for survival between Dunn and Saeed. You turned up with the wrong set of keys, Saeed, didn't you? Basically, it was a misunderstanding between me and Dunn, OK? I hear you were panicking. You were shitting yourself. I'm a human being, and this situation is, yes, sometimes I do feel a bit panicked. Dunn. Why didn't you sell anything? I sold those flats. You mean you tried to sell those flats? Roof sold five, no, yeah, so you scraped in with one. one. In isolation, if they weren't there, how many would you have sold? Dun, you didn't perform on this particular task. You're fired. Dun became the ninth casualty of the boardroom. Now five remain to fight for the chance to become The Apprentice. At the house, the candidates wait to find out who survived the boardroom. Without a shadow of a doubt, Dunn's been fired. Said and Ruth are stronger. Dunn has a chance last time and he missed it. Uh, this was his opportunity to step up to the mark and he hasn't done so, so he's definitely gone. I couldn't care less if Dunn gets fired. I think he's quite nondescript. Yeah, we knew you would be back. That was obvious. Oh, of course. Where's the other two? Hang on. Done? What? Oh, yeah. Hi, <laughs> mate. What did you do? Go on. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Right, son. Blade. I think the right people are here. I think after a couple of weeks, if we'd said, write your name down of Dead five people, I definitely think that the people around here would have had the same names here. And then there were five. Hello? Hi, this is Jenny calling from Sir Alan's office. The cars are coming to pick you up at 3.45 in the morning to take you to Heathrow Airport. You'll need to pack your bags for one week away. You'll need formal wear, as well as warm weather wear, because the weather's going to be changeable where you're going. And you must pick a project manager tonight. The <laughs> <laughs> roller coaster continues. Hang on a minute. Well, we're not going to get a chance to sleep, so we must be going somewhere where there's a long flight so we can sleep. It's a task abroad. Jesus, where are we going? 
I reckon it's... 3.45 in the morning. A week, that means long Hang on, right? 3.45 from Heathrow. No, hold on a second, because if the weather is changeable... That means yeah. it can that be hot or cold. you're moving. <laughs> you're not going to believe this. What? The cars are picking us up at 3.45. Tomorrow afternoon? No, this morning. We're going to Heathrow Airport. What? Yes, I'm not joking. Holidays! Happy holidays! Fucking <laughs> week! A week! A week! Project manager? Yeah. What are we going to do? I'm not bothered here. Not really, should we just toss for it? Heads. Cheers. Fine. Yeah, cool. Alright? Yeah. I'll do it. Shall I do it? Yes. Right. Bring it on, motherfuckers. Okay. Let's go and tell Michelle. Yeah. Three flights out to Longhorn. Uh, I'll bet you, yeah, a thousand pounds right now. We're not off to America. Yeah. All right. Well, where? We're going to Istanbul at six fifty-five. Right. Uh, yeah, Istanbul. TK nine eight two zone C. Okay. Let's go. The teams have one-way tickets to Istanbul. So far, there are no clues to what's in store. Basically, very confused, in the dark with what's going on, to be honest. Um, there's, uh, Nick's not here, Margaret's not here, Sir Alan's not here. So, um, just wait and see, really. We can speculate all night long, and at the end of the day, it'll be something completely different, so I've got no idea. Nick and Margaret are in Istanbul to greet them. As usual, they'll be Sir Alan's eyes and ears. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the grounds of the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul. Uh, Sir Alan can't be with us this afternoon, but he has sent a message. Pay attention. Here I am on a beautiful yacht in the Med. I've taken a few days off. Now, your next task is that you're going on a beautiful ship. Now this ship has got two and a half thousand passengers. Now what you're going to be asked to do is to come up with a service that you're going to offer them over and above those that are already available on the boat. The team that comes up with the most successful service will win and the team that doesn't, one of you, will get fired. Right. <laughs> Look behind you, it's the very, very big one. Oh, yes! yes. The ship's passengers, mainly American and British, have paid handsomely for top-class service. Sir Alan will take account of customer satisfaction in his final decision. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Grand Princess. My name is Peter Hollinson. I am the ship's passenger services director. Any feedback that I will be giving to Sir Alan's office will be based upon the amount of revenue that you can generate from your idea. It will be based upon the creativity of your idea and additionally, it will be based upon the amount of customer satisfaction that is generated. Any complaints that we do receive or that I hear from my colleagues around the ship will be reported back to Sir Alan's office. Very good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, cheeky little room. Cheeky little room. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, two doubles. Two singles. Two singles, sorry. Oh, this is awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. 
The teams can use any part of the ship and her staff. But on a luxury liner like this, every passenger's whim is already catered for. Existing services include everything from a 750-seat theatre to a wedding chapel. Creating a service that passengers are willing to pay for will take real ingenuity. The teams have a $500 budget and rules state that anything they spend will be deducted from their profits. Next morning, Saeed is up early, searching for inspiration. Golf. We could set up a, an area of the ship, okay, where they could come and take a swing, uh, you know, with a proper golf club and stuff, and just hit it into the ocean, hit the ball into the ocean, because that's a big statement. I mean, I know in Dubai, uh, what's his name? What's the, yeah, the uh, golfer, the, um, the world champion, yeah, the, the young guy. Tiger Woods? Yes, Tiger Woods. Where he it's obvious that so he either hasn't read the rules or interpreted them. So he's coming out with a lot of ideas and it actually stipulates in there what we can and can't do. Olympics, do a mini Olympics. Is that a service or is that just a competition? Um, it's a competition and it's a service. What service is it? The service that we provide them is, is it's a health service, okay? This is it's looking after your health. If we're going to go with that idea, we need to utilise exactly what's on the cruise, what's available to us. So you've got tennis courts, you've got table tennis, build round it. So you can run the marathon, I'll do table tennis, you do that, I'll do that. Let's just make a list of what we can and then we can do a mini Olympics. Here we go. Four bases under on turn. Below decks, Paul spots a crowd puller. He thinks it's got potential. What we could have is dance um, instruction and then, a, and then a show at Practice. the end, like a come dancing. Show. Yeah, and it so could be a group thing. In your two-hour session, you learn a few moves, you learn a routine, and then at, say, three till four, grand finale, everyone comes back, we have a dance, and you can have a number on your back, and the instructor could then tap people out, and then we have a winner. Quite like that idea. It's completely interactive. It's like nothing they do. Customer service would be great. Passenger satisfaction. They'll buzz off it. One, One base, six, two base. Convinced he's onto something, he approaches the ship's dance instructor. It's going to be like a come dancing type event at the end of the day. We're going to have numbers on the back, but lessons throughout the day, learn a step, learn a dance, and then you guys can judge it at the end, and we'll have loads of spectators, loads of people at the bar. It's going to be a real good fun event. And seizing the moment, he sells the idea to some would-be customers. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name's Paul. This is Ansel. This is Michelle. What we're doing tomorrow is organising a huge event try and get you guys dancing, moving about, but we're going to have a competition at the end of the day. Today when we land, we're going to go to Mykonos, we're going to pick up some prizes, so we're going to have a first, second and third, and maybe a booby prize, depending on uh, whose toes are still intact by the end of the day. Now, I guarantee you'll be getting uh, your value for money. Us guys are going to be dancing with you as well, and that's priceless. I think uh, Paul's doing a good job. He's just presented uh, tomorrow's event. But the only problem, and it's very presumptuous on, of him, is that he hasn't agreed the whole concept, the, the idea, with the passenger services director. I must be honest, I was having a very good morning, but then all of a sudden I got a little cross. I had calls to speak to a few of our passengers. They told me that uh, you basically announced to a large room of passengers about your intentions for tomorrow. Now, I'd like to make it clear, if any of the crew members on board had done that, they'd be in a lot of trouble. It was us that did it. It wasn't your crew people. Okay. We did it. OK. So how does our initial idea sound? It's a very good concept. There's nothing that you've come up with there that, uh, that isn't uh, doable from a ship's point of view. Well, I'm really glad that you, that you, um, that you like the initial idea, and I'm, I'm sure that we can pull this off. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do, so we'll go and get cracked on. Central to Saeed's Mini Olympics is a golf tournament. But driving golf balls into the sea has been ruled out by Peter Hollinson. Saeed's answer is to stop the balls with the tennis nets. I'm terrible when it comes to golf. Do you know, I reckon what's better? Let me chuck it with my hands.
Hello. Great time. Now, we've got a problem here. So when the balls go straight through. Do they? Yeah. Shit. I mean, if we're gonna, if, we, if it's just gonna be based on the swing, okay, practice your swing, we can use tennis balls. All right, cheers. The balls go straight through the net. Saeed wants to use tennis balls with a golf club. You see, ah, okay. Bed sheets. How you doing, you all right? Yeah. No, side, man, inside. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it's not on a stick. It is staying. No, no, but see, it's staying, then it's, it's, it's blowing out all over the place, isn't it? Yeah, but have we got any clips? That's what we need to find. We need to find clips where we can clip these together. Do you have any clips? Any sort of clips? <laughs> Do you want the good news? What? When you hit it, just stop it. But flapping sheets aren't Peter Hollinson's idea of a tight ship. This obviously, aesthetically, is not going to do at no, all. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's a good day for hanging up your washing, but that wouldn't do at all. Yeah. Are you asking me for my opinion on whether you should do the golf at all or not? Yes, yes. Right, OK, you shouldn't do it. The holes are too big, it was a good idea, you've researched it, so good for you, but unfortunately it's just not going to work. Life's full of disappointment, it's not going to happen. With golf vetoed, Saeed turns his mini Olympics into a fun day by adding a quiz and a raffle. We need to buy the champagne, I'm going to give you some money. I've got all the, uh, obviously you've got all the... First prize, champagne. Do you know that? Uh, Where do we get the champagne from, Saeed? Champagne from the shops. Does the money we don't spend get included in our budget? No, it doesn't. It's got no oh. reference, but we'll sell out anyway. Mid-afternoon, the princess arrives at Mykonos. The shops here should be cheaper than on board. Even so, aware that spending on prizes will be deducted from his profits, Paul cuts back. Just go to a tourist shop, buy something classic for $50, and then buy something for $25. OK, that's it. So 50 and 25 we're not doing 175 50 100 boutique here, innit? Yeah, but then I thought the next prize down was 75 and then the next one down was 50 <coughs> No, I think you'd be surprised at what you can get for 50 anyway. Because then it looks fine, because they're not going to know the value of that. It doesn't have to be a monetary value, so 150 25 OK? You have just changed it because it was 100, 75 and 50. We can't spend too much because we've got, comes out of our budget. Okay. The, the thing is about the, the, the actual dance event is worth it anyway. $15 a lesson is cheap. Okay. I don't agree at all. The whole point of this competition is that we're marketing it on the prizes and we just said we're going to spend 11 quid on the prize. I just think it's weird. Very weird. Me to tell okay. you what I've been doing. With so many last-minute additions to the fun day, Ruth calls a meeting to force team leader Saeed to fix a schedule. 10 o'clock to water aerobics, 11 o'clock to the fun run, 2 o'clock, definitely, definitely go back with the quiz. Let's keep it simple, OK? We don't want to get caught up with too, doing too many things, OK? Can I just suggest something? Everything that we're both saying is identical. Yeah. So let's not over-obsess on it, let's... No. And what I'm saying is, hold on, hold on, hold on. What I'm saying is, we just going to waste day, time if we keep no, rediscussing. Let's get a plan. The whole fun day idea I came up with, yeah. you've completely taken that off me now. The Olympics I came up with, you've taken that off me. What I'm trying to say is, let's Stop. concentrate on this. Otherwise, firstly. we're not going to work at all. Ruth, what I'm saying is, Saeed, listen I want to me. work together, okay, and that's exactly fine. what we're doing. But we literally, I'm saying one thing, you're saying the same thing. Whoever come up with the ideas, if you want to sit there and say, well, that was mine, that was mine, that was no, mine, no, no. go and do it. What I'm saying, listen. Right, we're just going off on to We need to know what we... That's exactly... If we, if yeah. we decide on... Where we're going to do it, yeah. Ruth, what we need Ruth. to do it, and then the man Ruth, listen, there's no massive rush here. All we need to do is now is decide what we're going to do and choose the themes, and that's all we need to do now. He has no idea how to deal with me. Um, when I disagree with him, I think he's not sure whether he should argue back or stop or what he's meant to do. It's a team at the end of the day. It's, it's myself and Ruth. You know, there's no one else here. So, of course, I have to take everything she says in consideration, but ultimately the decision is mine. And that's how I'm running the whole task. For the teams, getting their events publicised will be key. The ship's newspaper, delivered to all 2,500 cabins, looks like a perfect marketing tool. We want, we want something that's going to grip people when they see it. OK, obviously we want it to look very good, we don't want it to look cheap and tacky. Yeah. After giving the editor his big idea for an ad plus inserted flyer,
He leaves Ruth in charge of detail. We're meeting staff for call parts, by the way, yeah? Yeah. So I'll be back down there for that sort of time. Yeah. All right, see you in a minute. Basically, at 10 a.m., we've got the water aerobics. Oh, shit, I just want to tell Bruce something quickly. Sorry. What? The aerobics, we can have it from 10 till 12 now. OK, so we've got 10 till 12 aerobics. That's fine. 11 a.m., we've got... Shall I write it down for you again? Yeah, sure. Hello? Ruth? Hi, it's Megan. The prices that we're going with are $10, yeah? OK, cheers. All right, cheers. Is there any way you can put all activities happening on deck 16? All right, and can I quickly use your phone? Hello? The, the other thing is, uh, just very quickly, we're doing a, uh, a, a voucher. Um, OK, you know the, the, the prices that we're putting on the other uh, flyers? Yeah. Ruth? Hi, oh, basically. OK, the, the, the aerobics is fine. Cheers. All right, bye. Once Saeed stops making changes, it takes Ruth less than an hour to get it done. As you look at it, the first thing you see is our schedule. Can I just point out, it's the other teams. Not only that, I've asked if our insert with the gender on the back can be inserted, which means we haven't got to walk around 2,500 rooms. Without a doubt, we're ahead of the game in the marketing department. If you actually look at the publicity that's going out in the morning, we've got a block about that size, and they've got about four lines. And you wouldn't even look at theirs. You'd look at ours, and that's the whole key to marketing. You know, it's, you can have the best product, but if you don't look at it, you'll never sell it. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the morning show. Paul thinks he's found a trump card. Oh, oh, look who's back. Good morning. It's Not very marvelous early. Mandy. Yes. <laughs> Thank God she's an early This pre-recorded TV show will be beamed into every cabin tomorrow morning. And Paul has blagged a guest slot. Hey, what, Mandy, why don't you take a little break? In oh, the, get them the, from the green, the green room. room. Yes. Our very own green <laughs> room, which is about the size of a uh, tuna fish can. <laughs> And we're going to welcome a special guest guy. I'm sure you've seen him walking around the ship over here. Paul, good morning. Hi there, Frank. How are you Paul, doing? We you got right? you up bright and early today, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it's fantastic to be here. We are really looking yeah, forward to it. But you're looking sharp. He's got the jacket going, the hair's gel. Looking great. We'll try our best. Yeah, well, you're succeeding so far. So uh, you want to tell everybody why you're here and what you're up to? Certainly. We are uh, hosting today a Latin American chance to dance. It really is a fun-filled day. So I'm looking forward to it as well. I think it's going to be fun. And then uh, now for the uh, grand finals, we're going to have a live band playing as well. Yeah, we've got Oasis, the live band, coming on. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got so much so much going on, it's just so exciting. Today. Oh, look, he's all excited about this as well. I can't wait. I just tried to go in there and be like him, but I don't know how it's going to come across. Honestly, it's just... Oh, we got everything that we needed to be said. I've known Jackie and Jamie for years and years, and I can tell you right now, there are no... I was so close to getting the giggles. I just didn't know where to look. I just couldn't understand. Oh, my God. Okay. See you later on. I'll see you in the Explorer's Lounge. Hello, Mandy, darling. Welcome back. Let's oh, start, let's start with the place here. She got all excited. Jesus Christ. Oh, God, they're wired them two, aren't they? I can't pronounce that. <laughs> the ship's portals glitter in the darkness. The following day, the sun hangs low in the sky, silhouetting a life ring that's hanging on some railings. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the morning show. Look who's Breakfast back. time. While Ruth checks the paper, the morning show hits the airwaves. And we're going to welcome a special guest star. I'm sure you've seen him walking around the ship over here. Paul, good morning. Hi there, Frank. How are you oh, doing? We you got right? you up bright and early today, didn't yeah, we? it's fantastic to be here. We are really looking yeah, forward to it. But you're today. looking sharp. He's got the jacket going, the hair's gel. Looking great. We'll try our best. Yeah, well, you're succeeding so far. We are uh, hosting today a Latin American chance to dance. It really is a fun-filled day. We've got three different levels of uh, dance classes. We've got 10 till 11. Very good. 11 till half 12. I like it. Um, it's finishing up with a big yeah, it's, it's a strong marketing tool, you know, in the media. So, uh, We've got throughout the day a chance to show off and get judged by a world. Good, uh, good, good decision, really. Just come along and have fun. That's what it's all about. And we just hope that it's a great day. And we're looking forward to it. And let's hope the sun's shining inside now. So uh, that was good, mate. Apparently it's one showing there. No, it's not. It's 9, That's 9 o'clock, 9.15, half 9, 9.45. Saeed's writing something down. Saeed decides to hit back, loud and clear, through the ship's passenger address system. I'll be there at 10 a.m. No, 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 we hope to see you there. OK. Lost for words for once, Saeed seeks coaching from the expert. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Saeed, and I'd like... Ah, uh, OK. Uh, at 11 a.m., we have uh, a theme fun run, followed by a, a theme... No, sorry, okay, uh, to kick... 
things off. We have uh, a plank year old. Okay. Yeah. On deck 16, uh, forward. Okay. I have no problems. Let's do this. Um, to kick things off, uh, we have the water aerobics, which takes place at the spa pool, deck 16 forward. At 11 a.m., we have a themed fun run with a surprise theme on the jogging track. And then this afternoon, we have a lot more fun. Okay, and then this afternoon, we have a lot more fun activities for you. Uh, we hope to see you at the at 10 a.m. at the spa pool for water aerobics. Have a lovely day. Thank you. That was crap. I'm happy with that. That was rubbish. How are we getting on? Anyone? Passengers can only buy tickets for the events at the purser's desk. How are the other guys doing? Yeah, they should. Yeah, we can. Five. So the other guys have got five at the first, but they've done six bookings. We've done 30. Right, OK. Um, just, just, uh... The good news is, so far, we've got 32 bookings now. Uh, the other guys are doing well. They've got five. Paul's TV promotion has done the trick. The first lesson in his dance extravaganza is packed. Okay, just slightly to the left as we move. Okay, to push away. That's it. Just take a seat, and if you fancy it after the first lesson, we'll sign you up for 11.30, 12.30. Yeah. Take a seat and watch, or uh, enjoy the music. Nick Hewer, Sir Alan's aide. It's marvellous, isn't it? This is class one, and if they carry on class two and three like this, I think they've got really, you know, they're on to something. The ship gliding along. Above decks, Saeed's fun day is spread throughout the ship. Has anyone turned up for a fun run? Not yet. No. OK. Can I take you just into? Is that OK? With so many separate events to organise, he's enlisted the help of the ship's staff. Is that OK? And just I'll position you near the, uh, the pool. The plan is to kick off with water aerobics. But there are no takers. You know, life is full of ups and downs, and you've got to deal with it, so I'm not going to moan, I'm just going to deal with it. With an hour to kill, he turns their attention to the raffle. Champagne, we, you know, we're just going all out, really. Hoping it will be a money spinner. $5 for one ticket. We have a raffle that we are running as well. Do you want two, or do you want more? Two. If you could just put your name and your room address on there, and right, your name and your room number on there for me. I'm selling the, the tickets for five dollars. Uh, would you like to buy one? Uh, no. Ah. Just time okay. to tot up. I've just been rocker, but I've just picked up some more. I've run out of all my. <gasps> but they're selling like hotcakes. What? What? No, this is all here. Which tickets? Which? What do you mean? No, that's it. We just read out these tickets here. Yeah, but how are you going to tally up that to that? You're meant to put the names and addresses on the back. Am I? Well, every single one. Hold on. With the receipts, I've got their the room number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how do you know whose whose ticket was eight eight four zero nine one? Fuck. It's basically sold raffle tickets with numbers on, but the backs are blank. He wasn't sure what he was going to do, but if we didn't put them in. Um, then nobody would know. Well, in my opinion, that's fraud, because if people have actually paid money, they should be entered into the competition. So after, um, in about five minutes, I'm going to meet up with him and I'm going to tell him that he needs to put them in. These are the only ones without the name and number. Right, but you are, okay. you're going to put them in? Yeah, of course. And what I'm going to say is I'm waiting for this number here. So you confirm to me you're definitely putting them in, because otherwise it can be conceived as fraud. Ruth, I'm telling you that I'm putting right, it in, okay. darling. So what else That's all mine. Just break them up. Have you told Margaret that uh, this is what's happened? No, oh, they... Right, I don't give a fuck if they find out, because we'll just God, wait for these tickets. these tickets in here? Yeah, no, they put them all in. They, they need to go in here. These are all my tickets. Go! Just before lunch, Saeed's fun day staggers into action. Oh, look to Daisy. Come on, baby! Baby! People are playing tennis. Well played, good play. See the Zed. Uh, a raffle. By concentrating on the raffle, no one's been caring for the customers. Say, have you got a minute? I just need to have a quick word. I've been up to the, the tennis court. What is not good and what I'm not happy with at all is that there's neither yourself nor Ruth there to make sure from a customer satisfaction point of view that the people are happy. Yeah. 
we've got somebody running the event, but it's not his responsibility to make sure that people are happy per se. Yes, absolutely. If you're instructing him as somebody that you've employed, then I think you have to make it work and you have absolutely. to make sure that my passengers are happy. Mid-afternoon. Competing with sun and sea air, dance classes below decks are thinning out. And one step forward and wiggle those bottoms as much as you can. And wiggle There's not a lot of atmosphere in here. It's obviously a working class, which is good. It's built as a class, but I thought it might have been a bit more of a buzz. And I expected to see rather more people here. This is going on a big screen, so it has to be brilliant. Paul so decides on another star shot, appearance. Maybe something like that is great. Action. Hi there, guys. Welcome to Latin American Chance to Dance. Here's our professional dancers, world-class champion dancers. Jackie but this Jane time it's the big screen, okay, and it's slap in the centre of Saeed's event. If you've never danced before, this is your biggest opportunity to learn. It's a chance to dance. Solos welcome, mixed groups welcome. It's only $15, and there's a prize of $100 for the top prize winner. So, come join us, guys. Explorers Lounge. Woo! Paul does a ludicrous dance. A caption on screen, chance to dance, Explorer's Lounge. Having been ticked off for his absence, Saeed feels it's Ruth who should concentrate on customer service. That's where Jim Bowen's from. That's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, did you get that? OK, so in the raffle then, the first prize is a bottle of Moe. Ruth, I'm going to the, uh, the tennis court. Let me know whether or not you, you got that. Unable to raise Ruth, Saeed is forced to go it alone. Have you had a few games or...? You had a... Oh, you are? OK. Excellent, OK. Ruth, can you hear me? Backward, backward, trying to get all their Slowly things are starting to ticking off. We're generating a lot of interest for the, the tennis. Okay. Yes, I'm just gonna move out of the way. Who've you actually got up there? <laughs> After several circuits of the ship's deck, Saeed's final stop is the quiz. Uh, thank you very much for uh, obviously participating in the quiz. Uh, we have got a, uh, a lovely bottle of champagne for the winners. I'm very pleasantly surprised. I always thought the concept was good, which way I allowed it to go ahead. Um, there's always a genuine concern about whether the weather will be perfect or not. They've been very fortunate there, but that's good risk assessment. And to be perfectly honest with you, they've got more numbers than I thought they would attract to this kind of event. I'm just waiting for the crew to say it's OK and I'll start. No, Ruth yeah. finally arrives with raffle prizes. Uh, now on to the, uh, the raffle that's been running all day today. I'll ask Captain Andy to pick... Uh, the first, the winner. Right, here we go. T King. And on the champagne. That's Moe Chandel champagne. Thank you very much. But Ruth has blown the budget on too many bottles. Let's give one to them too. All right, no problem. Okay. Okay, cool. She slips the leftovers to the ship's staff. Enjoy that champagne, though. Well, thank you for all your help. There you go, young man. Good luck. Turnout's looking good at Paul's ballroom finale. Is everyone ready to dance on the dance floor? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. The instructors judge the heats, whittling down the dancers to find the lucky couple. Well done, guys. Big effort. Fantastic. And here's Michelle with $100. Hope it's been worth it. Fantastic. Well executed. Great fun. Everybody loved it. But the numbers weren't big enough. That's my, that's my feeling. The num they, could have, they could have had more people. Next morning... The Grand Princess slips into the Bay of Naples. Time to call Sir Alan. Hello. Good morning, Sir Alan. It's Peter Hollinson here from the Grand Princess. Oh, hello, Peter. Very good morning. What was Velocity's event, then? Velocity decided to offer dance instruction classes over three separate sessions and culminate in a dance competition in the afternoon. 
Ah, they came in three, three different sessions, yeah, OK. How did uh, Invicta do? It was called the Open Deck Fun Day. Fun Day, oh, right, OK. What I'm looking for is the kind of... Various elements to, to judge this by. Were the customers satisfied? Oh, yeah, customer satisfaction was very high. The teams are summoned to the bridge. And Sir Alan's back on the phone. He wants the results from Margaret and Nick. Nick, what's Velocity's numbers? Well, Velocity generated for the ship $1,014.16. OK. And Margaret? And Invicta, the same figure. Well, on the same basis, Invicta raised $383.09. Right. OK. My rules were that money is not just the only issue. What I'm looking for here is marketing, originality, customer satisfaction, creativity and all that stuff. Having listened to Peter and Nick, I really have to say that, that Invicta, whilst Peter thinks that some of your stuff was very original, it seemed to me that it was a kind of a little bit of a shambles. Uh, whereas Velocity seemed to be very contained in one area, their customers seemed to be very, very happy. So on the basis of that, Velocity, I'm going to say that you are the winners today. Yes. You're in Italy at the moment, Velocity, and so I'm, what I'm going to do is take the opportunity of sending you off to the beautiful city of Rome for the next couple of days. You'll be staying in one of the best departments there. Have a great time. Well done. Thank, Thank you, you. Thanks very much. Losers, I've got you booked on a flight this afternoon. I'll see you tomorrow in the boardroom. One of you will get fired. Surprised with the, the results, yes. I, mean, I thought we'd, we'd done enough to win it, obviously not. So I was shocked, yes. For me, I'm really gutted because it took a lot for me to do the task. I think the parts that I played, I did well. I did all I could have done under the circumstances. I, I don't think I could have um, given any more that I did, so I'm disappointed. I will do anything I have to in this job interview to make sure that I'm successful, because I believe that I am the apprentice. And of everybody that's left, I'm definitely the strongest. I mean, Ruth is tough competition. My strategy for the boardroom is to keep it simple, be direct, defend myself, and let Sir Alan know that I really am, you know, I've got the, uh, the, the, the energy and the, the dynamics to be the apprentice, so we'll see. Yeah, right, that's it. Your own, man. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. We absolutely smashed them to pieces. Bomb fucking annihilated them. Absolutely smashed them out of the park. Woke up in Naples today. We're off to fucking Rome, man. And we're off to, well, I think it's just Rome. But fucking <laughs> Rome, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to Rome before? Never been to Italy oh, mate, at all. Oh my god, it's amazing. You've got Colosseum. Yeah. Where Gladiators filmed. Cool. You've got fucking. There's just shit there. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Now that's what I'm talking about. Oh Shit, is this the bedroom? What's that? Is that an entire, it's a different room? Oh, it's like what? a secret little... Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, mate, I'm oh, sweet. Wow. No, it's not. It's a, it? like a kitchen. Is it? Oh! oh. Final four, and whoever's left back at the house. Cheers, Cheers guys. Everyone. Cheers. It's been brilliant, hasn't it? It's yeah. A For Ruth and Saeed, a dawn flight to London. 
in the city streets below, Sir Alan is on his way to meet them at the boardroom. Let's take it from the top. Said, I think you were the team leader, right? I was, yes. How'd you go about it, you think? It was a question of sitting down and seeing how much, you know, we can push the boundaries of creativity. Uh, Ruth suggested a few ideas, I suggested a few ideas, and then we sort of agreed on a fun day. I personally, Sir Alan, think that my idea was, our idea was creative, and would I do that same idea again? Yes, I would. Yeah. Definitely. At the end of the day, you didn't win. Yeah. Right, right. And one's got to look at why you didn't win. Yes. And it, Saeed said you did the marketing. Yeah. Now, marketing was this leaflet here. You also got yourself nicely positioned in, in this book it's here. It's actually the biggest. As you open it... I'm yeah, the, I can see it's the yeah. biggest. But the trouble is, um, I understand the other team, the night yeah. before already had some bookings yeah, for their event. Because when you turned up at 10 o'clock at the water event, you had the sum total of zero. I got out there the moment I could at 8 o'clock. If and I put I... my adverts out and it's on the boat's radar, if yeah. you like, I'd be wondering if I've got anybody, give me a feeling yeah. of whether I've got any biters. And if I hadn't, I'd start to worry and I'd think to myself, right, I'm going to do something else. Yeah. What, what about the TV and the big screens? Did you go on that? No. Why not? Every single person on that ship reads yeah. the newsletter because it's got information about the venue the next day. Their advert was actually shown early in the morning on television on a sea day when the majority of people were sleeping in and on the big screen. Now, that was not where we wanted. The marketing tap that I took is to hit as many people as you physically can. Every well, single person on that cruise ship saying, had but, that information. But, but no one turned up. We wanted to ensure that our time was used more efficiently and I hit more people. We succeeded in that. You, you succeeded in it. I mean, we, are you talking yourself into this? Ruth? No. How can you succeed in something if no one bloody turns up? We had. You hadn't succeeded in anything. You succeeded in getting an advert in, if right? You actually look and at the producing people. a leaflet. Yeah. But if no one bleeding turns up, you haven't succeeded, have you? From what I can understand, you said we're going to have a tennis tournament. People turned up. Who's not there? You. So, Alan, if you're looking for someone to organise tennis competitions, OK, you're, you're looking at the wrong guy. If you want someone to market your product and sell and make money, I can do that. That's my strong area. Now, Don't you think, yes, as the organiser right, of the event, that you should at least been there in the beginning? The answer to that from me is yes. Don't you think you should have just been there and said, thank you for turning up, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand you over to the tennis professional, have a nice time, be back soon? It all sounds really nice, but... Um, I was, well, I no, it sounds, sounds normal to me. Well, my perception was that it all sounded and looked a little bit chaotic. And you thought, hello, I'm off with my raffle book. No, that's completely and wrong. I'm just going to sell okay. and sell and okay. sell. Let me, I'm not going to involve okay, let me with the chaos get this just ask that question. I just wanted to say, OK, it was this, this, this task... Hold Please. on, Ruth, hold on. Yeah, OK, task, let, let Ruth answer yeah, that. It was... I went one end to ensure that was generating people. At the end of the day, there was at least 100 people that I'd sent there, people playing tennis, people in the pool, people at the quiz who had bought. So it wasn't the fact so, that I'm all right, Jack, I'm yeah. going to leave him to sort it out. Yeah. I, my organisation skills are fantastic, which is why every single thing I take on from beginning to end is organised well, it's calculated, and it works within the time frame. OK, just... OK, so this is not about boat trips, because I don't do boat trips. This is all about skills of organising, yeah. marketing, yeah. PR, selling. That's what it's so all about. what was about. the key out of that, Sorella? I'm just going to ask you a question. What was the key out of all this? Everything you've just mentioned, to test all these different areas... Well, the key, was, the, the key, key was, area? when I spoke to the professional on board the boat, he came down and he kind of ticked some boxes for me. So, first box was custom, customer satisfaction, loved it. The marketing on the face of it, the piece of paper looked quite good, the actual flyer was quite good, but 
There seemed to be no organisation at the events. You seemed to be running around like a headless chicken. Someone described you, Saeed, as a magpie. A magpie that sits up in the tree and sees something glistening, shoots down to think to solve, and shoots over there to solve another problem, then shoots over there to solve another problem. His area of expertise, Peter Hollinson, is again hospitality and catering. So, Alan, I would have preferred you to be there to make that decision on me. And I think you would have said, um, you would have ticked the boxes where it took the sales, yes, he gave it the ability well, to organise it. Because I mean, if, they, if you'd have taken three grand, if you'd have taken three grand, I would have said, you're right, because all of this adds up to a row of beans. Because all this, were the customers satisfied? Was the marketing any good? Would you do it again? All goes in one direction. It's yes to all of them if you're going to continue to do it. To do what? Make money. Well, Did you, you make money? No. Yeah, if you look if at you'd the... have come in with three grand, I'd agree with Concern, you. Yes, you are, you are right. And I was shocked when you announced who won and who'd lost. I was gobsmacked, because I was, I was actually stunned... That we made... You didn't know how much money you had taken during yes, the call. I did. We did. We, we yeah. knew exactly what we took. Seven hundred and eighty pounds. On the, that's what we. You didn't seem to grasp at all that the amount that you spent out of your yeah. five hundred dollar flat would be deducted. That was can very I, clearly I stated in the rules. Interrupted. When we were looking at what prizes to buy, so you said go and buy as much champagne as you can. We wasted the money that we spent without a doubt. Why we didn't did. you tell me then? Hang on, I did. I did. I said to you, Saeed, I'm not going to start buying the staff champagne if that's going to come out of our budget. Well, you went, no, 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 no. me. But I was instructed. Hang <laughs> so on, you're not going to, no, but you went and bought. Hang on, that's the funniest it. thing I've heard. Hang on, hang on. I today. said to you, and if you so, you give me one time alone. of the day. Okay. One time of the day that you said to me, right, Saeed, we are being so accountable. The budget's accountable. Can one I time. finish without you interrupting me? Otherwise, we're never going to get anywhere. Twice. Why are so you so worked up? What's the matter with you? Are we professionals or are you just going to lose the no, plot? No, I don't need to lose talk the plot, Talk to me mate. nicely and I'll talk to you. If you talk to me like no, that, I won't address Saeed, you. It's as simple all, as that. Well, first, you are just looking for an exit plan again. again. Did you read these bloody rules or not? I Can put I my actually hands get up my to say that I am responsible for not knowing... Yeah, I'm yeah, responsible for the budget. No one picked it up. I didn't pick it up, nor did but you. I actually it, said to you, it, so I mean, it's not exactly the bloody it's Magna Carta. To detail. It says it there. It I've underlined it. it there. Read it. Sir Just Alec, read the bloody read thing. The, you're the project manager. So how come you didn't say, I said to you. So you let me dig my we own do grave. not. No. No, what I'm saying to you is, Said, so I said, I did not Ruth? want. I said, I don't want to buy Ruth, the stuff champagne. At the end of the day, you went and bought it, though. If you were so conscious of this point, why did I you just... I asked him, I said to him, are you sure in the rules it doesn't say anywhere... We spent 340... Is I know what you spent. Please, we cost. give champagne to the staff. Ruth, why don't you say that we you overlooked it as well? We use it in the task, we give it to the staff. Ruth, why don't you just say that you overlooked it as well? No. You... Oh, yeah, did I overlook it? I actually pointed it out and you said no. So why it's did you let me go included. and buy them then? What I can't right. understand is, Ruth, can I have my rules yeah. back, please? Yeah, sorry. I mean, what I can't understand, this we is did. a one-page document. Yeah. It's clear as clear can be... Any cash spent will be deducted from the total yeah. revenue. Yeah. You say you spotted that. No, Saeed was meant to go and look at the prices. We're both no, Ruth, 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 Ruth. Into Very two... simple. Yeah, but... Very... Imagine we're yeah. doing text messaging okay. with each you other now, be... OK? You want me to... I'm sending you a text. You had these rules here. Yeah. Did you read them, yes or no? I'm going to answer it as shortly as I can. I read the rules, but right. I was did 70% you point that, did certain... You, did you pick that point up or not? I was 70% certain that that was in there. I checked with Saeed and he said, no, it wasn't. No, well, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm surprised. I'm it's actually true. sitting here shocked that I looked after you exactly so where well we were. throughout this task as a PM. Saeed, I, thought, I do not I need we looking after well the business profession. Why did you not did. tell me about this thing? I did. I brought it up and you, you said did, no. Ruth. Saeed, I was so standing... So you were seeing us design. sinking in a ship no. and you didn't say anything because no. you thought no. I was no. a PM. No, no, I checked back with you. So and you sinking actually on said, a ship we were now. Yeah, yeah hands on deck, overboard, all the puns are coming out now. The bottom line is... I said to you, are you sure? And you said no. Do you know what? I'd much rather sit here and say I haven't done something. No, okay. I'm not going to deny it because I actually physically said it to you and you no, you're said... you're blushing, you no. know that. And I'm not away. blushing, I'm getting mad with you because you won't let me finish talking. Me? Calm down. Your attention you know? to detail Contain is appalling. Yourself, God Your sake. organisation... Um, are hold on a minute, let's have a time out here. Now, Saeed, did you, yes or no, simple text message coming to you, did you read these rules, yes or no? Okay, I'm sending you a text, so I don't know. You didn't. I didn't. I, I overlooked that line. That's okay. what I overlooked. It's taken um, us ten minutes to get to the that, situation. It, well, it's taken me two seconds to give you an answer. The, the, the Ruth spent the, the rest oh, look for a solution to something which you clearly black. didn't do. Now, the other thing is, <laughs> when this all unfolds, you will see, Sir Alan. Um, Saeed, I did. We are being accountable for I this. I don't lie, money, mate. I don't. And this need is what's going to happen because that's it's saying to me is, and I'll give you no. the analogy again: is walk, walking into a burning house. Why would I do that? No, I checked back with you, your project manager. We both read the rules. We spent ten minutes on the first day in the cabin reading the rules. Now, and I said to you, Saeed, right, I'll tell you what, folks. Sir Alan, I need to add time something. out. Time out. Do me a favour, will you?
Kindly go out to the reception out there. I'm going to call you back in a, li in, in a little while. God forbid that he should win this thing. You'll have endless trouble. You know I like trouble, mate. Right? Do you don't like want any more like, courtroom drama? You've got to hand it to him. He's a character, isn't he? He is a character, but I tell you what, he's got a train need of trouble. She didn't do very well on this task either. I don't think either of them accepted. The thing about Ruth is that she's, uh, to me, I'm worried that she's just a one-trick pony. I get the feeling that she kind of just, all right, I'm going to just deal with Sal, 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 Sal's hope Sal's going to win through. Looking back, I think she's a much more credible person. The only thing is, sometimes you need people with a little bit of spirit in them, you know? Let's uh, call them back in. Hello? Jenny, send the two of them in, please. Sorry. Sorry. Ruth, are you a one-trick pony? Is it just sales? Oh, God, my, no. No way, shape or form. Not only have I proven that in my career, but I've proven that through this. I can negotiate, I can communicate, I can work as part of a team. Yes, I always, always go after the money. I can't help it, it's in my nature. You didn't get much this time, though, Well, if I look, if I can make money, I will. I've proven that in my career. You say I'm a one-trick pony, I haven't sold for two and a half years. I've been a senior manager, I've established departments, put in procedures, generated, I've bought to a profit line, 10 million pounds. There's not many people that you've got in this boardroom that have been a fundamental part of that. Let down to you? Fundamentally, I was a huge part. I was the head of sales and operations. But that's it, sales again. Are you no, just no, no, the one no, operations. Partner? No, no, operations and sales. I literally can fit into different roles. The only weakness that I've got is creativity. I'm a doer, not necessarily so much. And the Said, would you say the same thing in your case? So, Alan, just to let you know, I'm, I'm in a unique position now. I'm the only person here that has actually learnt a lot by um, starting my own business. Okay, now as you know. Running a business, you can't just do it based on sales, OK? You need creativity, you need marketing, you need PR, you need planning, you need organisation. What are you doing here? So if you've got your own business, what do you want to come work for me for? Because this is an opportunity for me to really expand and work with the best and be with the best, OK? I've looked at your past, I've looked into it, not, not in, a, in a massive amount. I personally think that we've got a lot in common in regards to my sort of ethos. I mean, I learned everything the hard way. You know, I was chucked into the deep end. The way I recruit, the way I do business is old-fashioned, and that is you work hard, you play hard, you make money. That's, that's where I'm coming from. So am I a one-trick pony? So I don't know, and I've proved it. So you're still batting for this job? Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, Saeed, I've observed you on this task and over the past ten weeks. I have said that there are some very good points that you have. I like the fact that you're very determined, that you want to, you know, you're never going to give up. Side of you that I'm not getting my head around is this kind of what I call grasshopper brain um, mentality of just jumping and flipping from one thing to the other. Then there's this kind of credibility issue. It's whether what you're actually saying is um, kind of like bears any resemblance with um, the facts. For example, we had a raffle where people had to write their names on the back of the, of the tickets. Yeah, it was, the raffle yeah. was my idea, by the way. Yeah, so I'm sure it was your <laughs> idea. I'm sure it was your idea. Now, from my understanding of the raffle, at these, uh, uh, um, is that you chuck all the names in the hat. Yes. And I think that halfway through the day, you'd realise you hadn't written the people's names on yeah. the back on the of the back, raffle yes, ticket. It doesn't yeah. mean that we could... We, we, if they, if they, the winner could still be tracked down. I mean, it was just basically a quicker way to get to the winner, yes. Um, and I did not pay attention to that, and you're right. Yeah. Well, was now, there a suggestion from you, any way or form, that perhaps the ones that didn't have anything written on the back, you'll kind of just um, conveniently lose them? No, so I, I suggested to Ruth, I said to her, listen, this is what the situation is. What well, I will I, do, all I want is a simple yes or no. Was, no, was there a suggestion? Absolutely not. I made the suggestion of yes. saying... Ruth? Ruth? You didn't read the rules. I find that totally unacceptable. Every time I've set a task, I've said, read the rules. Read them very, very carefully. 
And what I don't like, Ruth, is people who try and ring it afterwards and make it someone else's fault. Yeah, that's not what I did. Well, yeah, I think you did. It no, came I across didn't. like that to me, is you made it someone else's fault. Let's right? put it this way. Is I that he was the team leader, no, and you I made it his back. fault. And I don't like that. I don't like that when people do that. And, and Ruth, I'm sorry to say, I really don't like that. But I'm also sorry to say, Saeed, despite some flashes of genius, you're too much of a risk for me. Saeed, you're fired. Ruth, off you go back to the house. Off you go. when you start getting down to the last few yeah. that um, we really have to make these decisions. So there we go. Good. Done. Ruth was a tough opponent, but I, I saw sides to her that made me sort of think less of her professional outlook. I thought she lost the plot a few times. I thought she was blushing. She was trying to cover up a mistake. She clearly overlooked what I overlooked as well. And she came across a bit silly, you know, and, and stupid. Hopefully she'll learn from that. But is Ruth a tough opponent? Yes, of course she is, definitely. If there was anyone else in that boardroom now, I would have won. I would have got through. One job. Now four candidates remain. Sir Alan's search for an apprentice continues. Next week, no team orders. The candidates go head to head. Today, you're going to go through an interviewing process. I've got three people who I trust that are going to interview you. But you've done very well to get down to the last four, haven't you? Particularly seeing as it appears you're simply a salesman. When I saw his CV, I'd have put it in the bin. I'm just a likeable person who can get on with anyone. Well, you're not getting on with me. It's the worst interview by far. Everybody stretches the truth. So you would lie, then? to achieve what you want. Have I lied in my career? Of course I have. I've got a gut feeling and I know whether or not something feels right. You can't just say, I've got a feeling, I've got a good feeling in my water. It's ridiculous. He's made me feel like I'm about this big. And here's the big difference. Two of you are going to get fired. Do stay tuned to BBC Two, as in a couple of moments I meet Sae, the latest would-be apprentice to be booted out by Sir Alan. That's your fired in a minute. BBC Two's new broadband website is packed full of things connected to the Apprentice series. You can watch preview clips, exclusive footage, interviews with Sir Alan and his team and also learn how you could be considered for a future series. That's at bbc.co.uk slash bbc2.